Good morning. Ready, counsel? Bring the jury. All rise for the jury. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your patience. You may continue with cross-examination. Dr. Fonseca, you are still on the road. Yes, I understand that, Your Honor. Thank you. One of the things that you told us was that you did not do an evaluation of this. Yes, good morning, Ms. Martinez. Good morning. That's correct. And you did not do an evaluation of this. I did not do a psychological evaluation of Ms. Arias. That's correct. But you did an evaluation of their relationship. Is that what you did? Yes. And you looked at unusual sexual practices, right? Yes. And one of the unusual sexual practices that you cited for us on direct examination was the fact that the defendant had crossed her pubic area, right? I don't know if I termed that 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 was unusual sexual practices because that's something that is more common today in our society that young people are doing. So I don't know if I said that that was related to sexual practices. When you testified on direct examination, you didn't talk about that issue, did you? I did talk about that. That's correct. And you indicated that to you that was an indication that somehow that was related to Mr. Alexander's sexual desires, right? When I talked about it being an indicator, what I indicated was that there were a number of different variables that I looked at that made a constellation of variables that suggested, implied, posed the hypothesis of waxing the genital area seems to be more of a common thing in our society at large. So I don't know that it was referenced directly to that as being a practice other than it was just related to a younger look, if you will, and I put that in the constellation. When you say you put it into the constellation, it's something that you consider in looking at this relationship, right? Yes. And the fact that she styled herself in that fashion to you was significant, wasn't it? Yes. And it was significant because it reflected upon the relationship she had with Mr. Alexander, right? I wonder if you could please define reflected on the relationship. I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. I'm sorry. It had something to do with the relationship that she had with Mr. Alexander. Objection vague. No vote. Let me answer. I think it had something to do with the sexual interaction, but I don't know if it had something to do specifically to the relationship. You're not saying that what she did with that part of her anatomy had anything to do with Mr. Alexander, are you? Ask the question again, please. Are you saying that the way she chose to groom herself had anything to do with Mr. Alexander and his sexual practices? I don't know if Ms. Arias was doing that prior to Mr. Alexander, so I don't know the answer to that question. So the answer is no. It wasn't related to Mr. Alexander, was it? Objection mischaracterizing her testimony. Overruled. You may answer. I don't believe that that was my response. My response was that I don't know if Ms. Arias had engaged in those kinds of practices before Mr. Alexander and her became sexually active. And you did have an occasion to speak with the defendant on two occasions prior to at some point during this process, right? Yes. And at that time, you could have asked her that, right, when she began to engage in this practice, correct? The shaving of the genital area? Yes. Yes. And but you chose not to, right? I chose not to because I was not looking at the specific sexual behaviors. I was looking at the dynamic 
of the sexuality and the religious aspect of this relationship, not the specific sexual behaviors okay. necessarily. But wouldn't the fact of whether or not she began to engage in this practice before or after she met out Mr. Alexander, wouldn't that be important to you? It's information that is certainly to be considered. But again, I was not looking at the specific sexual behaviors. I was looking more at the dynamic of that relationship, sexually and spiritually. From what you're saying, are you saying that that practice is so unique to Ms. Alexander, to the defendant and Mr. Alexander, that somehow that's something that's worth considering? Objection mischaracterizes her testimony. Overall, Jimmy, answer. That's not what I'm saying. Now you read, but you did consider it, right? Yes. And you considered it even though a percentage of the people, of women out there do that, right? Men and women do that, yes. I'm not interested in women and men right now. I'm interested in women. Yes, both genders do it, yes. I'm not interested in men. Isn't it true that a percentage of the women do that? Objection, argumentative, Zavada. Overall, Jimmy, answer the question. A percentage. So what significance do you assign to it if women do it generally, or there's a percentage of them that do it generally, and you don't know whether or not she started engaging in this practice before she met Mr. Alexander? What possible importance could it have in coming in here and rendering your opinion? Objection, foundation, compound question. Overall, Jimmy, answer. Again, I did not look at the specific sexual behaviors. I looked at the dynamics of that. There was a number of things that they participated in that many couples participate in, but I wasn't looking at that specifically. Mr. Alexander also shaved his genital area. That, to me, was part of what they were engaging in sexually, but I wasn't looking at specific sexual behaviors. I was looking at the overall aspect of the relationship sexually. And again, you don't know when he began engaging in that practice either, do you? No. But still, you're attaching significance to it, aren't you? Every piece of evidence that I received on the case, I attached significance to. Every piece. So that's yes, correct? Yes. Ma'am, yesterday we were talking about the defendant's relationship with Matthew McCartney, correct? Yes. And you've had a chance to review the document, haven't you? We stopped in the middle of me finishing reviewing that document. If you'd like me to review it again, I'd be more than happy to. That was at the end of the day yesterday. Take a look at Exhibit 754.001. This is the four-page document? Your Honor, may we approach while she's doing that? Yes.
I reviewed that document. I have, but the pressure of everybody waiting for me to read it, so I hope I hope I get every line. It's uh, that refresh your recollection as to Mr. McCartney and the breakup and what happened. To some degree. The foundation of poor dear the witness, she hasn't seen that before. Mistake. Even if you haven't seen it, ma'am, does that refresh your recollection? Um, to some degree, because there, I've never seen this document and there was other information on this. So. But it still helps your memory, doesn't Of it? some sorts, yes. And with regard to your memory of that event, isn't it true that it was Mr. McCartney who wanted to break up with the defendant, right? That, that's the information that was in there that I don't recall, that the reasons for their um, termination of the relationship, but it was in this document here. And isn't it true that he, that's why he moved to Crater Lake, to get away from the defendant? Again, that information was in this document, and I didn't have that information prior. And in terms of the issue involving Bianca, do you know who Bianca is? Yes. You mentioned her previously, right? Yes. This is the person that supposedly was at Crater Lake and that Mr. McCartney was having a relationship, right? Again, that information was, just how you articulated it to me was in this document, but that's not how I came to understand it. The way I came to understand it is that they were still in a relationship and that there were infidelities and that Mr. McCartney was seeing Bianca. That's how it was presented to me. And the way it was presented to you about the infidelity was by the defendant, right? No, no, that... I don't know if that came directly from Ms. Arias. Um, may have come through. Um, it may have. It may have. Well, you didn't talk to Matthew McCarthy, right? No. You didn't talk to Bianca, right? No. So the information couldn't have come from them, right? Well, they may have reported to somebody else that was recorded. I don't know. But okay. it didn't come to them directly. No, it did not. And you did talk to the defendant directly, as you said. On two separate occasions. And you obtained whatever information you obtained from her, right? Yes. And some of that information that you're talking about, the infidelities, could have come from the defendant, right? It could have. But you don't remember who it came from? Not specifically. And with regard to the issue of her, do you remember that she drove all the way up to uh, confront this woman when she found out about it? Yes, that she went and confronted the woman, yes. That's a pretty aggressive sort of don't you think? Objection to the characterization, aggressive move to strike. Overruled, you may answer. No, I think I don't think it was overly aggressive. Um, there, there was no reports of violence or screaming or ranting and raving or beating up or banging on a door, or, but that she went to go see her. I don't think that that's um, atypical when people uh, suspect that their lover or their husbands are um, engaged in in a relationship that the individual doesn't know about. So you're saying that was a typical reaction for her? In other words, typical of other people? Objection mischaracterizes her testimony. Overruled. You may answer. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I'm not saying that, that it's typical, but it's not uncommon for, for, for that story to be told. And she wasn't suffering in silence, was she? Was she? Um, this information out. She wasn't suffering in silence with Mr. Matt McCartney because that wasn't the relationship that she was having with him. It was with Mr. Alexander. Mm -hmm. Different dynamic. I'm talking about Mr. McCartney. She did not suffer in silence when she got this information. Instead, she did something about it, didn't she? She did do something about it, yes. Went and talked to this woman, confronted her, right? Oh, yes, yes. To the point that when she arrived there, there was another individual by the name of Steve who was gay that was kind of alarmed about this, right? Again, I don't remember that specific, and I'm not sure what his sexual orientation has to do with anything. Well, let's get, take a look at uh, a transcript of what the defendant testified to, 754, that was marked yesterday. A transcript of who, I'm sorry? What's that? I didn't hear what you, transcript of who? Exhibit, if I may, Exhibit 754 that was marked that showed to you yesterday.
Yes, I'm not sure that you should. Are you done reviewing it now? I'd like to comment, Your Honor, if I could about this. I'm not sure I reviewed this yesterday. That's. You reviewed it today, then? Yes. And in reviewing this, uh, well, you did tell us that you are familiar with the defendant's testimony to a certain extent, right? Correct. And your familiarity comes from YouTube, right? Objection mischaracterizes her testimony. Over and over. You may answer. Uh, no, uh, please recall that I said that I had looked at um, documents of actual testimonies. These were uh, sent to me in the 25 to 30 CDs that I reviewed. That was um, uh, the official testimony of Ms. Arias. And in front of you, Exhibit 754 is part of that official testimony that you were sent to review, right? Objection, Foundation. Overruled. This is part of a testimony by Ms. Arias, yes. What's the date on it? Uh, the date on this here is February the 5th, 2013. Right. And in it, it discusses the issue that we've been talking about, right? The issue of her going and talking with right. Ms. Yeah, right? <laughs> yes. And it talks about Steve, doesn't it? It does. And when you asked me about the sexual orientation, it was the defendant that brought up the fact that he was gay, right? Well, I, yes, that's correct. I just didn't see the importance of what the orientation was. And, but you had an occasion to talk to her. You could have asked her what she thought the importance of Steve's sexual orientation was, right? Again, Ms. Arias didn't discuss that aspect with me. This is in testimony. But it is something that she testified to, right? Yes, this is something that she testified to. And she said that, according to her, Steve was being overly dramatic, right? But, I don't think she said over dramatic. I believe what she said, she uh, if I could have just a moment to find it and say it to you. Uh, he's, how do I say this? He's gay, so he's kind of, is very, he exaggerates. He's very emotional and is very animated. That's what she said about him, right? Yes. And then she also, as part of it, indicated that there was some concern on the part of Steve and Bianca, when she approached them, right? Yes. That shows an assertive attitude on behalf of the defendant, doesn't it? Objection calls for speculation. She Overruled. didn't diagnose the defendant. Overruled. It's suggestion of assertion, not suggestion of aggression. And it's not at all, it's at odds with your indication that she suffers in silence. It's at odds with that, isn't it? Objection mischaracterizes her testimony. Overall, do me answer. The suffering and silence that I talked about was specifically related to the relationship that Ms. Arias has with Mr. Alexander. The dynamics of that relationship is very different than what she had with this relationship, and I didn't really examine this relationship that you had with Mr. McCartney extensively. But didn't you tell us that the suffering and silence was something that she learned growing up uh, in the interaction with her parents? Isn't that what you said, that that's where she learned it? Yes, in part, that's correct. And growing up and learning to suffer in silence was before she had that relationship with Mr. McCartney, right? Ask that again, please. You said that this suffering in silence was something that she learned growing up, right? That's correct. When she was growing up, that was before she actually lived with Mr. McCartney, right? Yes. And it was before she broke, they broke up, right? Yes. And it was before she confronted or went over to see Bianca, right? Yes. So if she learned this suffering and silence before, it wasn't an, a deep-seated learned uh, behavior, was it? Objection mischaracterizes her testimony. Overruled. Again, my reference of suffering and silence had to do with her relationship with Mr. Alexander. Uh, suffering in silence, uh, how, I, how I tried to describe that was that uh, the relationship that she had seen with her own natal mother and natal father. Um, I don't recall anything in the um, evidence that I saw where the natal mother called the police for battering or for adult abuse in terms of their interaction, father and, and, uh, father and mother. So the suffering in silence was more related to Miss Arias's relationship with Mr. Alexander, not her relationship with all the other men that she is purported to have had. Uh, in other words, the four 
relationships or the three relationships that she had prior to Mr. Alexander. It was really only reference to her connection with Mr. Alexander. But if the etiology of his suffering and silence was when she was growing up, what you are now telling us is that it skipped over the Bobby Quattis um, relationship, skipped over the Matthew McCartney relationship, skipped over the Daryl Brewer relationship, and somehow cropped up in the Travis Alexander relationship, right? Objection mischaracterizes her testimony yet again. Overruled you the answer. Yeah, I don't think there was anything that was skipped over. I think there's probably some elements of that, but it was more pronounced with Mr. Alexander. Her connection with Mr. Alexander was different than she had with Bobby Wattis, with uh, Matt McCartney, or with Daryl. You're familiar with her breakup with Bobby Wattis also, right? Yes. And um, isn't it true that with regard to that breakup, it was at least precipitated in part because Mr. Wattis would speak on the telephone with some other woman in her presence, right? I don't know the details of why they broke up, but I believe there was also infidelities in that relationship as well. But the infidelities that um, we're talking about that are involved aren't even physical at all, are they? Objection calls for speculation. <laughs> of the sexual conduct of Mr. Juarez in 2000. Sustained. Rephrase. You're saying infidelities. Are you saying that there was physical population between Mr. Juarez and some other woman? Is that what you're saying? And that's what precipitated the breakup? No, I didn't, I'm not saying that there was a physical relationship and that's the, that's the reason. You can have infidelities and psychological, emotional infidelities as well as physical. So what was the infidelity involving Mr. Juarez then? Explain that. His connection, his involvement with, other, with another woman, with other yes. women. What form did that connection take? I believe at that time there was, it was on the phone and he was having contact, he was having contact with another woman. Um, I believe that she had picked up the telephone and it had heard that conversation, if I remember correctly. Actually, are you saying that when Mr. Juarez was on the line, the defendant would ban the listen in. Is that what you're saying? Objection mischaracterizes her testimony. Overruled. Answer. I don't think that I described that she's listening on the line deliberately. I think she just picked up the phone and found that conversation going. Is how I understood it. When you say that's how you understood it, the defendant also testified about that particular aspect, right? I don't recall seeing that in the testimony. Again, I didn't see all 18 days of the testimony. No, no, no. Isn't it true that you just told us that you didn't see any of it, that you actually reviewed the court transcript? Do you remember telling us that just now? This transcript here? No, no, no. no. Uh, for testimony. Yes, I didn't see all, all 18 days. You didn't see? I did not see all 18 days. But you do remember seeing the part about how Mr. Wattis had this relationship with another woman? Yes. You did see that part. Well, I, again, I'm not sure that I saw that in the testimony. I don't think so. I think it came out of, um, it might have been the interview. I, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure where, where that came. Didn't it actually come from, part of, didn't the defendant discuss it during the testimony back on February 4th, 2013? She may have. And do you remember her discussing it at all? No, I don't. Well, let's take a look at this exhibit of the transcript and see if that refreshes your recollection. I don't recall seeing it at all. Yes. If I may, take a look at exhibit 
five. Thank you. Have you reviewed it? I did, sir. Does that refresh your recollection of how the uh, breakup came about? It, it describes how that uh, breakup well, came about. But does it refresh your recollection? I don't remember the specifics of that, Mr. Martinez. I, I've already said that to you. But do you remember that you testified about the specifics on direct examination? Objection, ask and answer. She doesn't recall. I think I've answered the question. I don't recall that. Do you remember when you were on direct examination that you told us that it involved a computer? Remember telling us that? That it involved a computer with... Um... Mr. Quiles, right, that it involved a computer. The objection mischaracterizes your testimony. <clears throat> I don't recall saying uh, exactly how you're stating it, sir. I'm sorry. You don't, as you sit here today, you don't remember anything about a computer being involved at all. With uh, Mr. Babacuarez? Right. Uh, I don't remember the specifics of testifying that he had a computer or that she went after the computer. I don't remember that. I'm sorry. And you had an opportunity to talk to the defendant or get information about the breakup because you testified about the breakup, right? Yes. So what is your testimony about the breakup involving Mr. Juarez? That she had a relationship with him when she was in her late teens. They had separated and reconnected again, and that they had separated again. And then, do you remember talking about her going over to confront him about what she found? Do you remember telling us that? Objection mischaracterizes her testimony. Over to me, answer. I don't believe that I indicated that. You don't know anything about her going to confront him then? No. With regard to Mr. Brewer, you're familiar with Daryl Brewer and the relationship she had with him, right? Yes. He's the individual that you indicated was substantially older than the defendant, right? That's correct. And he's the individual that had a child, right? Yes, he had a son. Isn't it true that he also tried to break up with the defendant and she would have none of that? Um... I know that they were, they had separated when they were um, still living together and sleeping in separate bedrooms. Um, I'm talking about... I don't, I don't recall that, uh, that he would have none of it. I'm talking about early on, after they began dating, while they were still up in Northern California, that he tried to break up with her and she kept 
orange him, show you. You know any, any about that? Anything about that? That doesn't ring for me, sir. And you haven't reviewed any documents whatsoever that describe anything of what I just indicated to you. At this point in time, no. It might be that I walk out of this courtroom and I'm sitting on an airplane and think, oh, yeah, that's what he was referring to. And with regard to Mr. Alexander, the way that relationship went is that she was still living with, with Mr. Burr when she met Mr. Alexander, right? Yes. And after meeting Mr. Alexander, that's when she decided to end the relationship with Mr. Brewer, right? <laughs> Well, I think they had already separated within the home. I think that it became more manifested uh, that, in fact, that there was a separation. But I think that process had already started because they were living in the same house, but they were sleeping in separate bedrooms. But she, at that point, when she met Mr. Alexander, she decided that that's the person for her as a person to Mr. Brewer, right? Yes. And they were still living in the same house. Yes, I think I just said that. And that was in September of 2006, right? That's correct. And then she saw him on a number of occasions, and in November of 2006 is when she decided to convert to Mormonism, correct? She saw him. You mean Mr. Alexander? Mm -hmm. Yes. Then she decided to convert to Mormonism in November of 2006, right? Yes. And then they began to date, right? Officially as a couple, right? Well, yesterday you asked me about officially as a couple, so I'm not sure what you're referring to today because that, that date of when they were officially a couple was was in dispute, so I'm not sure what you're... It wasn't in dispute, you just didn't remember. Isn't that the way it went? No, it wasn't that I... Benedict mischaracterizes her test. Move to strike. Yes. What was the date then? Give me the date. There was no date. In fact, Ms. Arias was asking for a date. But that's, that's when the closet started to open. That is to say, the closet that he shoved her in. Because she was asking for a date. She asked for a date in February of 2007. When did you officially start to date? He couldn't give it to her. And so that's why I say she put the date on February. But I'm not sure that Mr. Alexander was in agreement with that or even commented about that. So the date is not, uh, not known in terms of when they were officially a couple, as you state. Put, put Mr. Alexander aside. I want to, you to focus on the defendant. And in terms of the defendant, you would agree that in talking to her, they began to date in February 2007. She reports 2007, yes. February of 2007. Yes, February of 2007. And you don't have a date, Mr. Alexander. Objection, ask and answer. Sustained. And with regard to this particular dating, she was still living in California, wasn't she, when they began to date in February of 2007, right? Yes. And he was living in Mesa, Arizona, right? He being Mr. Alexander. Right. Yes. In the home where she killed him, right? Still yes. Living. And she continued to live in Palm Desert for a period of time, right? Yes. And then she moved up to Seaside, California, didn't she? Uh, I don't know if she moved to Seaside. I know that she moved to Mesa after before, she uh, after she had met Mr. Alexander. Before coming to Arizona, she moved within California. If you remember, you remember. If you don't, tell me. Uh, I don't remember that she moved to Seaside. But in February of 2007 is when they do begin dating, right? Well, they've been in contact, but she was, she calls it dating in February, in February of 2007, but they had already been in, in contact, interacting with one another. And according to you, that's when he began to closet her, right? I, not in, two, not in February of 2007, no. Uh, in, in February 2007, he was open to the people that he was dating with them. Uh, from the emails that I saw from Mr. and Mrs. Sky Hughes, which was January of 2007, and Ms. Sky Hughes makes a comment about him calling her after at night when, when uh, the lights are out. So that, that, that had occurred prior to, to February of 2007. But nobody was present when he's calling her at night. That's information that the Hughes received from the defendant, right? 
I don't know where they received that information. My guess is that Ms. Arias is the, is the one who had reported those contacts. He never disputed that, by the way. The defendant wasn't living with Prison Sky Hughes, was she? Not to my knowledge. No, you just told us she was living in Palm Desert with Mr. Brewer, right? No, you just said that she moved from Palm Desert to someplace in California, Seaside. Um, so I, I don't want to get confused here uh, in terms of how you're laying it out. The date in terms of when they officially became a couple is disputed because Mr. Alexander never confirmed what Ms. Arias had stated about when they started dating. But the defendant told you it was February 2007, and that's what you told us yesterday, right? That that's what Ms. Arias had stated. Is there, and so because she's a liar, are you saying now that you disbelieve Obje that date? Objection, argumentative, vouching okay. will just strike. Okay. Do you disbelieve her when she tells you it was February 2007? Recall that I said that I was looking for Mr. Alexander to say when, when did they, for him to identify when they were. This is what she, she reported. So, she had asked Mr. Alexander, when did we officially date? And he never really answered that. And so this is what Ms. Arias says. That's the only information that we have about when this was an official relationship. And you told us yesterday that was February of 2007, right? According to Ms. Arias, correct. You weren't there for any of these events, were you? None of us were. So everything that you tell us is either according to a document or according to an audio or video recording or according to what somebody told you, right? Everything. In relation to? Anything that you tell us. You weren't there, so you can't tell us that you saw anything about them, right? Yes. You weren't privy to the conversation with Chris and Sky Hughes, right? No, I was looking at the email that they had written. I wasn't there listening to the conversation, but I just saw what they had written, what they had documented. And the defendant was living in Palm Desert, according to what you know and believe, back in February of 2007, right? Yes. And that's when you just told us earlier today, that's when Mr. Alexander began to closet her. That was the term you used, right? That was the... Objection mischaracterizes her testimony as to when he, he was, she was closeted. Overall, to me, answer. No. <laughs> I'm using the term closeted here in terms of Mr. Alexander not wanting to be seen publicly or acknowledged publicly that he was involved with Ms. Arias. Um, and that was articulated in the email from Mr. and Mrs. Sky Hughes when they talked about uh, Ms. Arias stating to them when she talked to them for those three days about him pulling pictures of them together down. Um, and so, and Ms. Hughes had also indicated of him not wanting publicly to know that, that they were together. And so that's what I was making reference to in terms of the closet, that he was really embarrassed. He wanted to bury that. He didn't want to be associated publicly that he was seeing. And that was my reference. But the, the conversation involving Chris and Scott Hughes was in January of 2007. Right? Yes, that's correct. That's just what I indicated in terms of that's what Ms. Guy Hughes had talked about in terms of Ms. Arias reporting that Mr. Alexander was pulling down the photos off of her Facebook. And you interpret that to mean that he wants to closet her, right? I interpret that to mean that he did not want to acknowledge that he was publicly connected to this woman. Or it could be he just didn't like whatever photographs we're being posted, right? Objection, argumentative, calls for speculation, move to strike. Overruled, you may answer. Would you ask your question again, please? It could be he just didn't like that particular photograph, couldn't it? Well, it didn't sound like it was a photograph. It sounded like it was plural the way Ms. Arias had reported and Ms. Sky Hughes had reported it. Or it could be he didn't like those photographs, right? And that's why he took them down. Again, objection calls for speculation. Overruled, you may answer. It seemed from the conversation that Ms. Hughes had and Mr. Hughes had uh, that they were going for the fact that he was not wanting to be public about it. And that's what I based my opinion on in terms of how that was described as well as Ms. Arias. So that, that's the one instance where you indicate that he wanted to keep this private when he took some photographs down from his computer, right? That is an instant, yes. Uh -huh. Pardon? Yes, that is an instant, yes. And anything else that you can point to that indicates to you that he was attempting to closet her? 
Well, I believe I said on one of the first days that I um, testified that um, Mr. Alexander's friends were interviewed after the killing, and uh, Mr. Bryant Hyatt uh, said it was absolutely absurd, was his terms, that Mr. Alexander was um, having a relationship with Ms. Arias. Um, Mr. Uh, um, Taylor Searle indicated that it was impossible for him to have a double life. So even his closest friends were not aware that he was involved with Ms. Arias. Where was Taylor Searle? What city and state was he living in back in January of 2007? Objection as to relevance. Overall. I don't know where Mr. Searle uh, was um, in terms of where he was living and what his residence was at that time. I was only aware of what he had stated. Do you know whether or not Mr. Searle was close with Mr. Alexander? Mr. Searle, when he was interviewed uh, by the TV uh, programs, I think it was 48 Hours, indicated that he was one of Mr. Alexander's close friends, as was Mr. Hyatt. So it could be that he was living in this area, or was he living in some other state? Objection asked and answered relevance. Overall, do me an answer. Again, I don't know where Mr. Searle was living. How about the, what was the other individual that you mentioned? Uh, that was Mr. Uh, Bryant, uh, Mr. Bryant Hyatt, I believe. Well, Mr. Hyatt, back then, where was he living? I don't know his place of residence either. I don't know the place of residence of the friends of Mr. Alexander. But in the beginning of the relationship, you do know that for some period of time, Mr. Alexander was here in Arizona, and she was out in California, wherever, right? Yes. It's pretty hard to have somebody go take it up to dinner, as you said, um, if Mr. Alexander's living here and she's living in California. It's pretty hard to show her off to, her, to his friends, given the geographical limitations, isn't it? I don't think I said anything about Mr. Alexander taking Ms. Arias out to dinner. Um, it, there was no indication um, that he was connected to this woman, and that was through the Facebook. Uh, they were a thousand miles away, so it would be difficult to see him on a regular basis. And this conversation with Ms. Hughes, I'm sorry, with Chris and Scott Hughes, took place at the end of January 2007, right? Yes. And it was precipitated by the defendant um, going to talk to them about her feelings and the relationship with Mr. Alexander, right? Yes. And as a result of that, in February, she and Mr. Alexander then began dating officially, right? Again, I don't know when the official date was, but they continued the relationship even after Mr. and Mrs. Hughes had spent three days talking with Ms. Arias about move on. Don't wait for Mr. Alexander. And they gave, uh, that email was articulated in terms of a, a five-year history of relationships that Mr. Alexander had had prior to knowing Ms. Arias. And they broke up on January 29th of 2007, right? And they what, I'm sorry? They broke up on January 29th of 2007, right? Uh, objection mischaracterizes her testimony. She never said they broke up in 2007. Overall, do me answer. <laughs> I don't believe that they broke up in January of 2007, Ms. I said that. I meant okay. June of 2007. Yes. So they broke up June 29th of 2007, right? Yes. And if they started to date at the end of February, well, in June 29th of 2007, they broke up that date, but actually she was ready to break up three weeks before that, right? Three weeks before that, in June of 2007? Yeah, 2007, right. I don't recall it that way. Well, do you remember telling us that she actually went into his telephone and found some text messages of him interacting with other women? Do you remember testifying to that? Yes. And that was three weeks prior to June 29th. Do you remember that? Yes. And the reason she stayed up until June 29th is because she wanted to go on these trips with him, right? I'm not sure that that's the reason she described being devastated discovering this and not really just being devastated by that. And they were, they were on a trip and they continued to travel together. But they went on two trips after she saw his, 
the text messages in his phone, right? Yes. And she saw those text messages in his phone without his permission, right? Yes. It was when he was asleep, right? Yes. And so she had no permission to go on there. That's a pretty assertive act to go into somebody's telephone while they're asleep to check things out. Don't you agree? Objection to the characterization of assertive, move to strike. Overall, to me, answer. Would you ask that question again? It's not suffering in silence to go, by her, to go into that Mr. Alexander's cell phone to check out his text messages while he sleeps. That's not suffering in silence, is it? Okay, so I, I feel like there's two parts to that question. So um, suffering in silence came after that. Um, the going to the text, uh, picking up the phone and um, looking at those messages without his permission is correct, and she did it to validate a suspicion that she had that he was um, having contact with other women. So she had a suspicion, correct? Yes. And she acted on her feelings in a very, not a very, in an assertive way by going to the telephone, right? Yes. She didn't talk to him about it, right? She, she asked, she, she reported that she did ask him about it several times and that she denied that he was seeing or having contact with other women. So she did ask him. And even after he told her no, she still had that feeling, right? Yes. And then she acted on that feeling, right? Yes. She didn't just suffer in silence, did she? Well, she did when she initially discovered it because she kept it to herself for approximately three weeks and then mentioned it to him. He, uh, according to her, kept asking, what's wrong? He sensed something, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't uh, tell him what she had discovered. But when she had the feeling that he was interacting with other women, mm -hmm. she acted on it, didn't she? Objection, yes. Objection, ask and answer. Oh, 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 answer will stand. And then she decided to stay in that relationship even though she discovered that his interaction with other women by text message. And she did that because she wanted to go on vacation with him because they had a plan, right? She didn't tell him um, that she had made that discovery. She kept that to herself for a period of time. Um, and one of the places that they went to was the photograph of the balloon festival, right? Yes, I believe that's true. And the other place that they went to was that place that you said was a, that you described as being significant to people of the Mormon faith, right? Yes. Those are the two trips that she went to after she had already gone into this telephone and had already decided to break up with him, right? Objection mischaracterizes the testimony and the evidence. Overall, to me. Um, after she had suspicions of infidelities, she wanted to, to verify that, and that's why she went to the phone. She had previously asked him about it, which he had denied, and then she, uh, that suspicion continued, and so she went to the phone and checked the messages. But my question was directed afterwards. Even though she had that information, she went on the vacations with him, right? She continued with him. Went on the vacations with him, right? They were traveling together, yes. And? The places that you believe they went to was one of the balloon festivals. Do you remember talking about that? I didn't talk about the balloon festival. No, I think you're you incorrect. Do you remember the photograph that had them in the foreground and there were balloons in the background? Do you remember that? Yes, but I, I didn't speak of that is what my point is. I didn't talk about a balloon festival. All right, but you yeah. talked about a photograph that had them in it and there were balloons in the back, right? There's a photograph of them traveling. I don't recall that I said that there were balloons in the background. Objection, Your Honor. May we approach? You may. Okay. We'll check in at the break. Check in at the break. You may proceed. So, ma'am, she discovers the, what she termed to you as the infidelities, and then she holds back on it so she can go on a trip, right? I don't know if she holds on to it so she can go on a trip, but she holds on to it. And they go on a couple of trips, don't they? Yes, they do. 
And they do break up on June 29, 2007, don't they? In June 2007, yes. After they've gone on these trips, right? Yes. And one of the trips that you believe they went to was the one in the photograph involving the balloons, right? It was a trip. I don't know specifically which trip, but it was a trip that they had taken. How about the one to New York? Is that the trip also that's involved here? Objection. I'm sorry, not New York. The one that's important to the Morgan people. Objection, Your Honor. Can we approach? You may. This trip to this Mormon site that they went, that's one of the trips that they took, according to you, after she discovered the infidelity and before she broke up on June 29, 2007. They had taken a, a couple of trips after she had discovered these messages on her, on his uh, phone. And as best as you know, it was these two trips that we've been talking about. I don't know the specific place, the location, geographical location, because there were several trips that they had taken to the Grand Canyon, to New York, um, several places. And after they broke up, well, they broke up as we did June 29th of 2007. So they actually only really dated for about three or four months, right? Objection mischaracterizes the evidence. Earl, to me, answer. Again, I can't give you the official date, dating date. If we want to go by what Miss Arias Please, dated, which was, tells you. well, is that the date that you would like to go by? Let's go by whatever dates Miss Arias tells you. Okay, which that was February of 07, and then they uh, broke up in June of 07. But we can't really count February because they could have, according to you, started dating at the end of February because you, you don't have a specific date, right? <laughs> Objection asked and answered. The same. Well, there's March in between there. That's one month, right? Yes. There's April. That's another month. Yes. There's May, right? Yes. And we can't count June because she discovered the infidelities early on in June, three weeks before June 29th, right? Objection to the characterization that they can't count June. Overall, to me, answer. They were still seeing each other in June. But you just indicated to me they broke up on June 29th, and she wanted to break up three weeks before that, right? No, I, Mr. Martinez, I think you're mischaracterizing what I said. What I indicated was that I didn't know what the official date was when they started dating. I was looking for Mr. Alexander to provide a date for that. He did not. Ms. Arias stated it was June of 2007. When they were on a trip is when she discovered uh, these infidelities on, on a phone. At the end of June is when, I don't know the exact date, Mr. Martinez said the 29th, at the end of June of 07 is when they terminated. They had taken some trips after she had made that discovery of those infidelities. And this is all based on what the defendant tells you, right? Yes. And so it could be three or four months, depending on if they break up at the beginning of June, or if they, can they start dating at the end of February, right? It could be three or four months that they were dating. It was a period of time, some months. I don't know the exact, because we don't know the official, the quote unquote official date. Well, if we count February, that's one month, right? Yes. March is another month. That's yes. Two. Mm -hmm. April is three. Yes. May is four, right? Yes. And if they break up early in June, that makes it four. It, I thought you indicated they broke up at the end of June. At the well, beginning of June. But she discovered the infidelities early on. Yes, but she really? still traveled with him throughout that month. Objection. He's mischaracterizing the testimony again. Uh, overruled. And you're saying that they traveled for that month, even though she knew that she was going to break up with him because of the infidelities. That's yes, that's correct. And after that, they're broken up. After, okay. June 29th of 2007, they're broken up. She, at that time, is living in California, isn't she? Yes, she is. He's living in Mesa, Arizona, right? That's correct. She, within two weeks, moves to Arizona, doesn't she? That's correct. 
That's where Mr. Alec, and she moves specifically to Mesa, Arizona, doesn't she? She moves to Mesa, uh, Mesa Arizona. I don't know if it's exactly Mesa, but I understand it was not in the direct community that he lived in and that she didn't go to the same wards, but eventually got close to the same community that he was in. When she moved here, you don't know whether or not she moved to Mesa, Arizona or not, do you? I don't know. Characterizes her testimony. She just said she moved to Mesa. Overall, oh, Jimmy answer. I don't know if, uh, specifically the area, but she moved uh, nearby, and then as as uh, within a short time, then she moved. I think in the same community that he was living in. Yeah, she moved to Mesa, Arizona. That's what you're telling us. Yes. Initially. Yes, she moved to Mesa, Arizona. And that's pretty assertive, even though they've broken up. She still comes and moves to Arizona, right? Objection to the characterization of assertive. He's not explaining the oh, reasons for the move. Overruled. You may answer. Right? She does move to Mesa after they had separated in July of 2007. Which is within a couple of weeks after breaking up, right? It's a short period of time after they had separated, yes. Well, I don't want to say separated. They, they're not, quote, unquote, de dating because they never really separated, if you will. They've been having an ongoing sexual relationship for almost two years that commenced in September of 06. I'm, going, I'm talking about June and July of 2007. Yes. That's what I'm going to talk about. And in July of 2007, she moves to Mesa, where yes. the same town that he lived in, right? Yes. That's not suffering in silence. That's being doing something, isn't she? She's doing something, yes. She moves she here. She moves to be closer to him, right? She A does. Christian foundation. All right. And then she starts to do other things. For example, in August of 2007, she did something else, didn't she? Something specific, Mr. Martinez? Yes, she was keeping in his window as he was making out with a woman, wasn't she? I don't believe that she was peeping. I believe that what had occurred is uh, the way she had described it was that she had um, called Mr. Alexander. She was uh, wanting, she had stored her things. She had moved here. She had stored her things. He had offered her a place of storage for her things. And she was wanting to have to get her social security card and had gone that evening and had spoken to one of the roommates. And he was unaware that she was going to be coming over. And uh, when she went, when she went to the place of residence, the, apparently the way she was described, the lights were out except for a TV that was on and she saw two figures there and they were engaging. She did not know that that was Mr. Alexander with another individual. Um, then she uh, ran out. She hadn't recognized who that was. So I don't call that peeping. Peeping for me is if you're just standing there and you're looking in there for a period of time. And the way it was described and uh, was that she had just gone there to pick up something, looked in the room and saw that. And I believe you called it peeping. And you're saying she didn't recognize Mr. Alexander, right? Objection mischaracterizes her testimony. Overall. Yeah, I didn't say that she didn't recognize, she didn't know who was in the room because there were no lights on except for the TV screen. But the testimony is based on the testimony. The testimony of? The defendant. It's something different than what you just told us. In, in, I'm not sure what you're, you're referencing, sir. Well, she said she did see Mr. Alexander there. Afterwards, she recognized no. him. Isn't it true that she said that she saw Mr. Alexander and recognized him kissing another woman? Not initially, she didn't recognize him. Yeah, but she did, as part of her standing there, she did see him and recognize him, didn't she? After standing there for a little bit, then she, but not initially, she didn't recognize him. It was afterwards, yes. But she had to stand there long enough to look at what they were doing and then recognize him, right? Yes, you would have to say that. And she also saw them kissing, right? Yes. And she saw, also saw that this woman's brassiere was off, right? I believe so, yes. Well, she also saw that when they saw what was going on outside, that they went to hook the brassiere, right? Yes. She came over unannounced, didn't she? She, at that time, yes, yeah, she had called that she was coming over to pick up. He didn't know that, apparently. But she came over unannounced and went into his backyard, right? Yes. 
didn't go through the garage even though she knew the code, right? I believe she reported that it was locked and that she went around the side. Are you saying that she believes that the garage door was locked and that the code didn't work? I didn't say that the code didn't work. I well, said... She does know the code to the garage, doesn't she? I don't know. Well, we heard a tape that indicated she did. Are you going to have... Do you disbelieve her when she says that she knows the code and gave us the code? I don't recall her commenting about knowing or not knowing a code. And did you say that that was on a tape, in the, in the audio tape of the uh, sex encounter that they had? I'm asking you whether or not you know about her knowledge involving the code to his garage. I don't know about her knowing the code to the garage. I know she had access to the house because her things were there, but I don't know if she knows the code of the, of the garage or not. I don't know that. But if she knew the code to the garage and she was coming over and the front door was locked, she could just have pressed the numbers and gone into the garage, right? She could have. And the items that you claim that were stored over there, they could have been stored in the garage, right? Objection calls for speculation. Overall, to be answered. I don't know where the things were stored. Um, she had indicated at one point that um, some of her paintings were inside the house. Uh, and some other things. But you don't know what else she had there, do you? No, I don't know what else was there. And she could have walked into the door and gone inside the house that way, couldn't she? Objection again calls for speculation. Overall. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know how she could have gotten in. And, but you've seen photographs of this house, haven't you? I've seen some photographs of the house. I don't know if I saw photographs of the lock or the code pad or the garage, but I saw you know, uh, one or two external photographs of the place of residence. But instead of the, and she didn't ring the doorbell, did she? I don't know. Well, if she didn't ring the doorbell, you would expect that a normal procedure, if somebody rings the doorbell, somebody comes to the door, right? If they're in there. Objection is a speculation of what Mr. Alexander and his date heard. That's sustained. Well, she didn't ring the doorbell. She didn't tell you she rang the doorbell, did she? I didn't hear that, no. And you did. She did tell you that she ended up in the backyard, right? Not in the backyard, but she'd gone around to the side. So that may be in the backyard. And she saw through the sliding door what was going on inside, right? Yes. That would put her not in the front of the house, right? Yes, I just said she went around to the side. And so what she's doing then is letting herself go to this backyard and stand there and look at what's going on inside Mr. Alexander's house, right? Objection calls for speculation. Overall, do you need answer? What was your question again? She allowed herself or she intentionally went to the backyard. Yes. Looked at what was going on, right? Yes. That's not suffering in silence, is it? Objection mischaracterizes the term suffering in silence. Overall, do you need answer? Yeah, that, that, I don't see that as reference to that. She wouldn't leave him alone, would she? <laughs> Objection argumentative. <clears throat> Overall, do you need answer? Uh, there was an intrusiveness there by Miss Arias. Yes. And it was at his house not out in public somewhere, right? In other words, this took place at, a, at his house, not somewhere else, right? Yes. And this was in August of 2007, correct? Approximately, I believe so, yes. Well, let's take a look at an exhibit so that we can be sure as to when it was. All right, while that's being marked, we're going to take the morning recess. Ladies and gentlemen, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 11.25, we'll start back up. Please remember the ammunition. All right.